It's about 1 a.m. and I'm happy to report that all systems are functioning as expected and the conditions are nearly perfect. Hello and welcome to another video of Jeff Ball Photography. We are just below West Virginia's highest point, Spruce Knob at the Experience Learning Center for the final day and evening of the Almost Heaven Star Party. And it looks like we're going out with a bang. Stay tuned, let's see how tonight rolls out. Transparency is probably as good as I've seen in drama that just jumping out at you in 31 naked eye. So you join me here at camp and we are going to have multiple setups going if everything lines up. I have changed some of my configuration. I'll give you a little explanation as to why I've done that. And it has to, a lot to do with the most recent advent of the smart telescopes that are really making a statement in our hobby. So let me show you some of the instruments that I'm using tonight and I'll get into a little bit of why I have changed so my approach to uh, astrophotography. This is the Astrophysics 92 stowaway. The big change here is we're going with a full frame camera. The ZWO 6200 MM Pro with the electronic filter wheel, seven slots, seven two inch slots to capture narrow band and RGB and luminance. 
the goal tonight is to finish up a project that I've started in the backyard. When I get to a dark sky, I like to capture more oxygen three data from a nice dark sky and I'm really going to overwhelm this image that I'm working on and I hope it shows up here at the final video with some O3 to try to try to really complement the hydrogen alpha significant signal that I already have. So the big change was going to a full frame chip size and I've been using four thirds and um, APS-C type chips. When you go to full frame, it really starts to challenge all of your optical system. And I've been working on the 130 refractor from astrophysics with the new focal reducer. Uh, it takes it down to F5. But I'm still struggling with the spacing. You have to have the right spacing from the chip to the focal plane. And I'm still struggling with that. But I do have it dialed in here with the 92 millimeter stowaway. So why full frame? I go way back. I've imaged with film and the full frame really, to me, resembles a lot of the high quality that I was getting with medium format film back in the day. And what I see in the, in the landscape right now are the smart telescopes, the sea stars, and the likes, the Veonis and others similar, just really providing amateur astronomers the opportunity to gather data very simply. Now, given there's a little bit of a compromise on the chip and noise and chip size and final out image output that you can end up with, and I'm really recommitting myself to more of a print oriented output. And my advice has changed dramatically for those who are wanting to get into astrophotography. My advice would be get a C star, learn how to work with the data. I think some of these smart telescopes now you can download FITS files and learn how to do image calibration and work with the data because don't spend your time working on image acquisition until you're ready to go up the next level that's going beyond presenting your images in just a cell phone or an iPad type orientation because the C stars and the smart telescopes. What I see some of the work being done there with people, now granted, they're still gathering a lot of data uh, and stacking it and processing it as, just as we do here. But the image acquisition is so much simpler and it's really pushing astrophotography in a, in a new and exciting direction. So that's why I went to full frame, because I think really it sets apart from the sea stars of the world when you can get a high quality, large resolution and print type quality from an astrophotography uh, presentation. And so that's set up number one. This is completing a lobster claw and bubble nebula region that I've been working on in my backyard. I'm going to supplement it with more O3 from a beautiful dark sky. Let's take a, set, take a look at setup number two. This is another new piece of gear for me. This is setup number two. I really haven't even had a chance to do a Milky Way photography session this whole summer. So I'm breaking out the 135 millimeter Rokinon lens with the Canon RA camera. What is new is this contraption that really brings together all of these individual components, the electronic filter wheel with some uh, electronic focus band here that goes down onto the lens and it holds the guide scope and it also holds the ASI Air, in this case is the ASI Air Pro, very neatly. All compact, all very well built. This is first light with this setup. So that setup, I actually ran across, it was probably one of the more strategic ads I've seen, and that was on Instagram, and it's from an Etsy supplier. I'll put the link here, I can't remember the exact name of the supplier, but I thought it looked like a pretty cool configuration to check out. So we're going to try a the Milky Way's leaving us, unfortunately, very quickly here. So we're going to try a two-panel 
blend of the M8 all the way up through the uh, Omega Nebula region, the core of the Milky Way. Try to get a nice resolution and a nice presentation of, of the Milky Way here tonight. So if everything is proceeding according to plan, which I'm trying so many new things, not sure if that's going to work. But this is the Zeppon rail system that will do a time-lapse in-motion capture of the Milky Way of the camp. So this will be the orientation. We will start here, and the Milky Way will kind of be rising over here to the right. So my goal is to capture camp, and then we're going to rise and blend in and capture the Milky Way as it, as it uh, progresses toward the west. So that previous setup was with the Canon RP, the modified Canon RP. And now this is the fourth and final setup. This is the Canon R5 with the 24 mil lens. And our goal here is to do a stitch of multiple Milky Way images to capture a pano, probably some of the lighting from the field here, and then the Milky Way should be arching at an angle up over this way. So that's the vision. I hope it comes to fruition. Of course, all of tonight will be powered by the Ford Lightning. Numerous videos on the Almost Heaven Star Party, previous years, introductions, the Experience Learning Center, it's called uh, My Favorite Place. So I invite you to check out those videos where I explore this facility and the Almost Heaven Star Party in a little bit more detail. Getting ready to leave the mountain. It just takes one night, one spectacular night. Great imaging. Great. Those, that Canon image stabilized binocular in those views. It's just spectacular. So another Almost Heaven Star Party. Stay tuned to the channel. We're going somewhere in October. Not sure where. Might be the Stanton River Star Party if the weather cooperates. I hope you guys have clear skies. Do a lot of good imaging and observing. And enjoy God's wonderful creation. Till next time, thanks for joining. Exiting Spruce Knob, there's really about five ways to get up there. Hard to believe. Kind of a remote area, but there are so many logging roads, old logging roads. So the route that I take, most coming to the Almost Heaven Star Party are coming from the east. I come from the west. This is called Gandy Creek. And Gandy Creek is a slow, moderate grade downhill all the way to Middle Mountain, which is not too far from Elkins. And in the EV, I literally pick up through regen braking, a pickup energy from Spruce to Elkins. And the road can be very nefarious. And over the years, it, it can be very inconsistent. And I may just be jinxing this as I'm about halfway down, but this is the best I have ever seen Gandy Creek or Whitmer Road. And as you can see, it's a forest forest gravel road and it's in great shape it's a little very dusty so I cover everything in the in the truck bed with a tarp trying to minimize the dust of course it's all in sealed cases but this is uh, Whitmer Road and Gandy Creek a lot of fisher fisher people come and fish the uh, good creek here, of course, I'm not sure what the water levels and the lack of rain and the drought have done to fishing, but it's a very popular destination and the road is fantastic. I was bragging on the condition of Whitmer Road and I've stumbled across this was not paved last year. And this section is where a lot of the fisher Fisher people come and there's a lot of roadside picnicking and swimming holes so I, I guess that's probably why they paved this because the dust can be really bad through here and the road conditions can probably deteriorate a fair amount of traffic coming through here but I don't know if this continues to Whitmer which is probably another 
three or four miles. But now that I've tried this, I sometimes don't take this road because of the dust and the unpredictable gravel conditions. But this is sweet, beautiful drive if you're ever up here and have a reason to go into Elkins if you come from the east. What a beautiful, beautiful drive this is following Gandy Creek.